There has been chatter for quite a while now. Will he or won't he this morning? President Biden making it official he does plan to run for re-election in 2024, releasing a three-minute video. Joining us this morning is WBZ political analyst John Keller. And John, this is no surprise. Good morning. Good morning, Courtney. No, it's no surprise, although to look at some of the poll numbers, the, the sort of rock bottom approval ratings that Biden has been dealing with and the distinct lack of enthusiasm, even among the core Democratic electorate for another Biden term, uh, there's an element of, of eyebrow raising here, I think, or reasonably so. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, he's going to do it. And uh, there doesn't appear to be a serious challenger in sight, Courtney. Now, in addition to those approval ratings, you know, another big point of contention here, I guess, depending on who you ask, is age, right? He's 80 years old. He's the oldest person to serve as president. Moving forward, do you think that this, this age factor helps or hurts him? Well, to some extent, it depends on who winds up running against him, uh, in, uh, which Republican. If it's Donald Trump, there's not much of an age difference uh, there. Trump's just a couple of years younger. So, uh, uh, look, that's kind of baked into the cake with Joe Biden. You know, should he have come next year a, a faltering debate performance? We've seen this movie before. Ronald Reagan, when he ran for re-election, had uh, serious doubts about his age and mental competence raised, and it didn't stop him from breezing to re-election. Uh, you know, Courtney, uh, one thing you learn when you cover politics uh, for a living is to never expect that a given election is going to be the same as the last election. They're all different. They're like snowflakes. Uh, but in this case, uh, at least right now, I sure am seeing echoes of the midterm elections uh, last year uh, and even 2020 in the sense that it. it it, it shapes up, if it's going to be a Trump-Biden rematch, as not really a referendum on Biden, even though he's the incumbent. Normally, when an incumbent's running, it's a referendum on them, mm -hmm. uh, but more of a referendum on Trump and the Trump era. And if that's the way it works out, uh, you can see why in a new CBS News YouGov poll, 54% uh, uh, of Democrats and Democratic leaners surveyed said they were accepting of another Biden run, and 28% actually said they were confident. So, uh, you know, if that's the way it's going to shake out, uh, then the rationale uh, of Biden 2020 and of the Democrats in 2022, I think, has a good chance of still standing up. Now, John, you know, some would argue that a big reason or at least a significant reason for his win was just the overall um, exhaustion and antipathy of former President Donald Trump. Do you think overall that Democrats want him to run? Well, uh, in, in the CBS poll has it 55-45 in favor of him running again. There have been other polls that show uh, significantly less support. But you know, that's, that's sort of pregame buzz. Now that he's a candidate, once it becomes clear there are no viable Democratic challengers, if it isn't clear already, I, I think a lot of that will fade away and you'll see Democrats coalesce behind him. Uh, the, the announcement video that Biden released was really telling, Courtney. Uh, first of all, there were six separate mentions of the word freedom or freedoms. This, of course, has been a big uh, right wing talking point during the pandemic era of oh, governments encroaching on our freedoms with lockdowns and school closures and so forth. So he's going after that issue uh, by citing, you know, uh, uh, calling the Republicans extremists and citing threats to democracy and the right to vote, threats to Social Security and so forth. Uh, and also, if you notice, the ad is, re or the announcement video, I should say, is replete with images of uh, women and people of color. That's the core of the Democratic base. Uh, and uh, obviously, he's trying to make sure they're with him all the way. 
Now, as it stands, you know, we're still, there's still time for people to throw their hat in the ring, of course. Um, can he beat the current field of Republicans? Well, you know, that, that's the big question, isn't it? Uh, the uh, uh, Donald Trump's poll numbers are even worse than Biden's. So a Biden-Trump matchup is really a dream scenario uh, for the Democrats. Uh, Ron DeSantis looked like he might be tougher competition. He hasn't been looking so great lately. You know, we're a long way away, really, from any actual voters really focusing uh, on uh, November of, of 2024. Uh, but in the meantime, it, I think it is telling that the Biden announcement video really doesn't dwell at any great length on any of his record. Uh, uh, for these last couple of years. There's no mention of the Inflation Reduction Act and no mention of the student, the effort to uh, 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 cut or wipe out student loan debt. Uh, instead, uh, this race is being framed at this early stage by the young Biden campaign as a question of, do you really want to go back to that? And we've seen the answer in two straight elections. It's not good news for the Republicans. Definitely something we will continue to keep our eyes on. You're right, it's early, so in coming months, it will be interesting to see how this continues to unfold and if there is more of a focus on what he's done and his record and not what could be. John Keller, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us this morning.